Hello, this is Matthew Miller with the Zenit and Cell Phones blog. As you can see in front of me, I have a couple of the Windows Phone 7 devices launching on AT&T here in the United States. And um, I wanted to kind of run through some of the, uh, the applications, right? Some of the key applications. Not so much um, the functionality of the device or applications loaded by default on the device. There's uh, been plenty of videos created by Microsoft for, for most of those. One that I uh, particularly appreciate and I like to show on both of these devices, just to kind of give a side-by-side -side comparison of the screens, is Bing, right? I mean, the Bing always has this fantastic uh, picture in the background, and you can kind of see here, between these two devices, um, with a 4-inch screen and a 3.8-inch screen, a uh, Super AMOLED screen, and um, I believe this is a S Super uh, LCD on the... Uh, on the surround, I believe. Uh, both look great, and I just kind of wanted to show those. So, uh, let's see. Let's start off with uh, looking at some apps on the on this Samsung Focus. So one of them is, uh, is Netflix. This is available now in the uh, marketplace. So let's see. It should sign in, hopefully, with my account. I believe it is connected still to the Wi-Fi. I have a SIM card in the, uh, the surround, but not in the Samsung right now. Oh, okay, there it is. So here's uh, here's my home. You know, you can browse through some some of the DVDs. As you can see, I have lots of kid titles in there, and you can scroll through genres, search, instant queue, and back to home. Now, if I want to watch a movie right now, I started uh, just to kind of play gamer. If I tap on the resume here. It should launch me into landscape mode and then start playing the movie once it's uh, checking device activation, downloading movie information, determining video quality, and then it will launch into the buffering, and then it will launch into it and play. Acquiring the license. Actually, I have the volume down on the device. Let me just turn it up a little bit. So as you can see, the video looks, uh, looks quite good. So it'll go ahead and play through, uh, play the video there. So it's nice you can actually stream Netflix videos right on your, uh, right on your phone now. And I believe that works uh, uh, from what I've seen so far via 3G or Wi-Fi connection. Uh, Twitter. Now um, this one is not. This is Twitter for Windows Phone Preview. This is the official Twitter app. It's currently not available from what I can see yet in the marketplace. However, it was preloaded for me on this Samsung Focus, so I could kind of check it out and see what it's about. So, uh, you know, that, that the maximum that you can have on the icons on the bottom is four of them. It has refresh, compose, message, and search. And then your settings and your profile are in here. Settings, you can either have a dark background like I have right now, or a light background. Um, I prefer the dark myself. It looks, looks quite good. You can see there's uh, my timeline, my mentions, uh, quickly messages, lists. Now, list is uh, the list that are on my device. Uh, that I've created, and you can create new lists, right? And then back to timeline again. Now, if you tap on somebody, you can tap and hold. You can reply, retreat, favorite, or view the profile of that. If you just tap once, it'll kind of open it up in its own window, where you can retweet it, retweet it, reply, and then you can go in here and do uh, some other things: mail the tweet, text the tweet, translate if it's a foreign tweet. And you can scroll up and down. The one thing, you know, there's uh, there's this application, and I'll go ahead and jump into Seismic, which is another. I have it loaded on here. It's another um, another Twitter application. There's also Twit. Um, they're great. Um, they they function um, pretty much as what I've seen on other mobile devices. However, if you bounce out of it, or even if your screen locks, right, whenever you turn it back on, it refreshes and reloads. So uh, it's not doing anything in the background. You're not getting notifications of, uh, you can't set a notification for just mentions or a notification for updates. Um, there's none of that going on right now. And I don't know if that's something that can be provided by developers in the future or if we're kind of stuck, um, kind of going backwards a little bit where there's no, um, no backend uh, multitasking kind of thing going on. So this is, uh, this is Seismic, right? So there's refresh, search, post, some settings there. Again, we have the home, replies, messages, lists. And this one is a list that I follow, it says. Um, so this one actually has the list of the ones that I follow, not just the list that I've created like the official Twitter app has. Then there's profile, 
which is my profile, and uh, then home again. Now if we tap and hold on somebody, see what it says, and there's no tap and hold. If I tap on it once, it opens up in another page, reply all, share by email, reply, retweet, favorite, retweet with comment. So there is no tap and hold. So right now, it looks like uh, the official Twitter app may have the bunks functionality that we've seen on, on Twitter apps. So, big concern we had before was, where's the Twitter apps? They're going to be there, folks. Um, unfortunately, they're not uh, They're not providing you with some of the updates and things. You have to go into the app to actually, actually use it. There's a Google Voice application. Uh, I believe it cost me $2.99. I purchased that uh, a week or so ago. So if I tap on uh, Go Voice, let's see what it shows here. Go Voice for Google Voice. It should start up and log in. Most of them are just voicemail numbers. Just to make sure that uh, I don't have anything on there. I want to show you some of the functionality without uh, without revealing all the numbers that are happen to be on here. So excuse me for a second. Okay, so there we go. There's a page of just names, right? Uh, it has my inbox. I can go through text messages. Uh, if I tap and hold on somebody, <clears throat> I can call them, move to the trash, mark as in red. Um, pretty functional application there. And if I manage my settings, if I say call or text, I can do the plus sign. And here we go. It can't send a text message. I don't have a SIM card in there right now. But I could make the call. And at the bottom, there's the you know call or send a SMS if you have a SIM card in there and set up. So it uh, looks like a pretty good application, actually. And it was uh, 299 So uh, Google Voice, if that's important to you, that's a nice application to think about picking up. Let's see, we have Acrobible Lite, which is a Bible application. Um, one of them that are available, so say I wanted to go to James, I tap on the J, tap on James, James 1. There we go, it loads it up, and you know I can read the Bible on my Windows Phone 7, which was an important thing for me, and maybe for, uh, for other people as well. And there's a couple applications, there's some paid ones, but I, until I get my own device, I'm not buying a lot of, uh, a lot of applications. Um, there's eBay, that doesn't really matter to me too much. There's Fandango, which is a nice application. Me and my family do enjoy the movies. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'll just enter the location here, Puyallup, Washington. Do a search, see if I can find Puyallup. Found it, I say continue. And here we go, in the theaters. Should load up what we have. There we go. Opening this week. I'm still looking for some good sci-fi stuff to come out. There's social network, right? We tap on that. Play the trailer, trailer, look at some photos, find out about it. There's some reviews, show times at the local theaters, fan reviews. A lot of things you can do with that, and that's the uh, that's the Fandango application. Flixster is similar to uh, Fandango, right? It's got some uh, the Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, judging and things like that on there. We have Foursquare application. The official one is uh, is in here. So here we go. It's gonna launch up, uh, launch up some places, some tips, friends. Let's see what the friends are doing here. I, I admit uh, I used Foursquare quite a bit several months back, but I haven't used it much uh, lately actually. Uh, refresh, shout out, add friends, my profile, the scoop, and log out. So you can see you can see what your friends are up to. Places. If I want to do a shout out, you can share with friends, search, with, share with Twitter, add comments, cancel that. Oops. Oh, I guess I backed out too far. Okay, so that is uh, Foursquare. I showed the Google Voice. Uh, we have the IMDb, another one of those things that's uh, you know movie-related kind of focus type application. There you go. You can you know, see Showtime, see what people are talking about, top news, um, a bunch of other things with IMDb and Office. Excuse me, Shazam. Right, we got Shazam in here. 
uh, will tag songs, right? So let me see. Let me play a song on this, uh, on the surround, actually. Because I'm not going to sing a song for you. And I'll have uh, the other device tag it, so... So as you can see, why, uh, why, while the Shazam was going around, it, the circle was getting bigger the more it heard the song. So there it goes. It quickly identified it. If I tap down here, it says Zoom tag now, delete my tags, get a Zoom pass. If I tap on the Zoom, right, should go to Marketplace search, search for Big Jack ACDC, look in the Zoom Marketplace. If that's available, then you can get options to download it or purchase it or whatever you want to do. So Shazam is kind of a nice application, and it's uh, well integrated in with the uh, with the whole Zune, the Zune ecosystem. Right. So the other one we have is Slacker, and this is again an alternative for you for streaming radio. Um, the Zune Pass does stream radio, but some people might like uh, like their Slacker account and things like that. So as you can see, you can you can do a lot with uh, with Slacker. We have uh, say the classic jazz station, right? Tap on that, start streaming a song. It's loading up the song down here, but if we come down, we can see there's pause, skip, favorite the song, ban the song, remove the favorite station, check out some song info, share with a friend, view your settings. So let's say we want to tap on song info, read a biography, album review, song lyrics. There's no lyrics to this particular song, but uh, go back to now playing. So it's nice to have Slacker. Slacker is one of the ones that I uh, I pay the yearly fee for because I do appreciate and like the music. Okay, so that's a look at third-party apps on the uh, Samsung Focus. Let's see if there's anything else on the HTC Surround that I wanted to show you. Let's see. I think that's about it for the apps that I currently have. I'll just take a look at the marketplace to show you what's in there. Let me just clean off the screen here for a second. They do uh, collect fingerprints, as you can see. So, uh, you know, the other one has Samsung Zone. This one has HTC apps. If I tap on apps, let's see how the marketplace is going. It's it's being filled out regularly, actually, with, uh, with a lot of applications. So, you know, there's Featured, and there's uh, there's some games in there. I have Star Wars. I, I played that on my, my Samsung uh, video. You can see the Star Wars Battle of Hoth in, in action. Frogger, Rockers, again, free games. There's free and paid apps in the marketplace right now. For some reason, the all isn't all actually browsing all of it, so if I did something like entertainment, it would actually show you a few more applications that for some reason are not showing up in the all, so you've got to check on a few different stores currently as they shake out the bugs of the, uh, the marketplace. I haven't seen a ton of the big name guys in there yet, such as EA and, and things like that. I see a lot of um, on a, as you can see, a lot of independents and, and small developers releasing some applications in there. Um, not a ton of big names at this point. We uh, we see the launch launch now for uh, for Europe. We'll see the launch in the U.S. in November 8th. So there's still some time to, to work that out. Um, let's see. That's uh, I don't want to play Flowers right now. My wife has been playing Flowers quite a bit and increasing my achievements, which I guess you can get up to 200 points from achievements from uh, is each specific game, right? So that's the Xbox section with some of the games. You can see uh, Sims 3, Harvest, Uno. I understand that the Harvest takes quite a while, and I won't show it, I guess, because I understand it takes like three minutes to load up, load up the game. Um, it's a role-playing game. I guess it has some nice graphics and things, but uh, um, I understand it does take some time to load the game. Oh, I see this purchased the full game or a trial. The nice thing is these trials seem to be uh, seem to be pretty functional trials.
it seems like gaming on the um, it is loading there as you see it's in the background but I'm not gonna wait for that right now uh, gaming with the uh, the screen out or the speakers out may be a, a nice thing to be doing on the uh, on the surround actually all right so that's another look at uh, Windows Phone 7 and a few of the third-party apps uh, there'll be plenty more coverage coming as uh, the marketplace continues to expand